shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free yes it shall <clears throat> good morning to you and i trust that you are fine how was the weekend mine was good we are sharing truth this morning on open heavens coming from luke chapter 3 19 through 23 on and on you are warmly welcome to the really really knowing god channel with me pastor larry adeneko it's our package to inform and inspire you into a real knowledge of the very real god that we serve powered by the pastor larry adeneko center for Inspiration, the place <clears throat> This is the Daily Gem Devotional, making you a gem to your generation and gemstone upon the crown of Jesus Christ. If you desire to really understand this fantastic God of ours, this is your favorite channel. And we are praying. Father in heaven, we bless your great name of God for a wonderful weekend. As we go into this this morning, oh God, we ask oh God that you power it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father God. Amen. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, then Luke chapter 3 now from 19. But uh, Herod the Tetrarch, being rebuked by him concerning Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, and for all the evils which Herod had done, also added this above all that he shut up John in prison. When all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also was baptized, and while he prayed, the heaven was open, and the Holy Spirit descended in bodily shape like a dove upon him, and a voice came from heaven which said, You are my beloved Son, in you I am well pleased. Now Jesus himself began his ministry at about 30 years of age, being as was supposed son of Joseph, a son of Heli, son of Matt, and on and on, and like to the end of it. Okay then, so, um, <clears throat> Herod the Tetrarch. Now, um, in those days, uh, the way the Roman government arranged everything, somebody was in charge of uh, 10 cities, somebody was in charge of four regions, you know, somebody was this and that, you know, they had their um, jurisdiction of, or, or domain, but everything under the governor, that's the truth about the matter. So it was still Pilate at the end of the day that had the final say, even though some of these guys had um, some measure of authority in different areas, you know, depending on the size of the area that was uh, uh, given him. So this person, Herod the Tetrarch, <clears throat> was rebuked by John because uh, he had taken his brother's wife um it's a long story that doesn't really concern us too much here um <clears throat> and uh, i think somehow somehow they have you know managed to get the woman to divorce the, the brother married this other brother long story and anyway um the morality of it um john had challenged him upon and corrected him about and then the bible says the other evils which herod had done so obviously this herod had a couple of evils so he's a record okay and maybe john had a way of uh, um openly you know talking to him or talking at him or uh, you know that kind of a thing and he used his position to get John arrested and to get John imprisoned. That was what happened. And uh, we see that this happens even in our day and time, that some people they use their position, their public position, their public office, uh, the public um, power, authority they have for the meantime, or in the meantime, they use that to oppress some people. They use that, they abuse such powers. And some of this abuse of power can actually affect a child of God. Yes, um, particularly, we find it everywhere in the world, really. It's just that it is more prevalent in some parts more than the other ones. It actually happens everywhere, where somebody will abuse his public office and... Um, at times they, they just come back and say sorry you know uh, they say he has apologized and that's the it in some other cases there's never no sorry at all just does it differently and that's it uh oh he's in office for the next eight years or thereabout or four years as the case may be and he's using that office to do all kinds of things yeah now <clears throat> the men of god we have a responsibility to stand up to to preach against evil okay habit at times we need to be wise about going about it at times uh, at times you don't need to mention names you just go ahead and preach against evil in general unless you are opportuned to come to a place where you meet uh, the um 
Shall I call him culprit now or somebody who is uh, uh, the one perpetrating it to say to him in a private capacity, sir, that is a, you could have done this better, you could have done this better. I won't say this about you publicly, but you know, something like that where you have the opportunity. But you see, um, that is on our own part as people of God, as men of God, as, as women of God. But on their own part, you find out that some of these people, they are, they are harsh against criticisms and they can use their public office to oppress you, to do what is unfair to you. But remember, you as a child of God, be ready and willing to suffer injustice for the sake of the name of Christ, for the sake of, the, of righteousness, like we learned when we were reading uh, the books of Peter. Praise the Lord. So, let's move on now and then he shut up in prison You're right the next thing we uh we read from here is people were being baptized it came to pass that jesus also was baptized and then uh if we add this to what we see in some other accounts of this whole story we learn a very big lesson from the lord jesus christ now jesus was the one john was waiting for jesus was the main the main john said just said a couple of uh, uh, lines earlier on that somebody is coming after him that will be bigger than him you know and all that so jesus knew he was bigger he knew that he was the son of god and all those things anyway he came to be baptized um, in some other accounts john says why are you going to come to be baptized and he says let's do it now let's so that we can fulfill all righteousness in other words in spite of jesus's bigness in spite of knowing that he is god in human flesh he deliberately assumed a lowly position identify with what god what, i mean was doing in in the baptism of john baptism of john is saying uh, identify with this great revival that god is doing we are turning from the uh, wrong direction to a godward direction even though jesus never had any wrong di di direction to turn from he identified with john publicly in whatever it was john was doing i could imagine the level of encouragement that must have ministered to john seeing uh, this kind of great person coming to be baptized or so identify with him what god was doing through him you know and on and on like that so at least in the records of heaven jesus identified with what was coming he was what was coming but he identified publicly with john and all the rest of them in what was coming glory be to the lord jesus christ i think we can learn something from there that no matter how god has you know blessed us and where god has placed us and position that god has placed us we should still continue to humble ourselves and realize that in spite of all the blessings of god and all the honor that god has placed upon us that is we should remain in a humble place no matter what the case may be and i think uh, we have some good examples around us uh, concerning that but we have some other not so good examples around us at this time and i hope some of them get to see this or some of their followers get to see what i'm saying this morning hallelujah so he went on and while he prayed the heavens was opened now i like that while he was doing this baptism the man was in a prayer mood he was in the mood of prayer and i'm i'm using that to say to some of us who are going through the baptism of jesus the one we do in the name of jesus and the name of father son and the holy spirit while we are going through that be prayerful let your your mind be um sober be in communication with god even while you are going through that that was what happened with jesus christ he prayed as he was going through the baptism and the heavens were opened now some people have used that uh, as a metaphor for when blessings pour down upon us from heaven and i pray for somebody this morning may the heavens be opened unto you in the mighty name of jesus christ in the course of what you do as you pray let favor come from heaven to you in the name of jesus christ let let you know god was the one who said something in the book of malachi he says i will open the windows of heaven and pour forth a blessing unto you let not only the windows even all the doors and all the counters and everything they have to open from heaven let them pour unto you as you reach out to god this morning in jesus name the next thing again we want to learn from there the holy spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove upon him and a voice came from heaven we'll come back to the voice later let's look at the holy spirit here descended in bodily form like a dove why did god use dove in particular he could have used an eagle for example to show strength and grace and might and power and ability but no he chose to use dove for a dove for the holy spirit it gives us an insight into the personality of the holy spirit of the three the godhead has god the father god the son that's jesus and god the holy spirit we are learning that god the holy spirit is the one that is most gentle is the one that is most peaceable okay because the dove represents gentility he re represents peace the dove also represents um 
friendliness. The dove is typically friendly with human beings and very, very faithful. So we learn all those things about the Holy Spirit, gentle Holy Spirit, peaceable Holy Spirit, spirit of peace, spirit of gentleness, is spirit that has a relationship friendly with you, spirit that is faithful, that is going to be there according to what Jesus, when they've been commissioning from heaven to do. All those things we learn about the Holy Spirit. That's why God used the dove. And I pray that somebody will go and learn about the dove and thereby learn about the Holy Spirit in Jesus' mighty name. Finally, that word came, that voice came from heaven. You are my beloved son in you. I'm well pleased. And we say all the time, this is one occasion where we find all three persons of the Holy Spirit <clears throat> coming into play. God the Father spoke about God the Son when the Holy Spirit came upon him. God the Father spoke about God the Son when the Holy Spirit came upon him. All three of them feature there and we can see that Trinity thing again coming up. It will keep coming up throughout. No matter what we say about it, it will keep coming up. It will keep coming up. So that's it. I think it's a place to stop uh, today so that we can just go on and have a fantastic week by the grace of God. Please think about these things and as you do, remember to share with other people as well and refer us to them in the little bit that we do every morning. Thank you very, very much. Have a great day.